Alrighty, welcome to episode 49 of Black Hole's Let's Play series. Well, it took a long time. I mean, a really long time. It took a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of stuff. But I did it. I has a singularity. Okay. Seriously, I mean, it takes 256,000 items to get one singularity. So, yeah. More than one little trick was used. But, I got it. And that's what matters. So, uh, in order to use this, we're going to need some ender pearl dust. Probably not that, though. I bet that that kind of ender pearl dust isn't going to work. Yes, the, hopefully this will work. And some... Oh, I have some industrial TNT. Cool. Yes, you need TNT. Now, we need to go to a safe place. Fortunately, I know of such a place. It's called a really big hole in the ground that happens to be nearby. I need a shorter name for it. Lol. Okay. Okay. What you do is you place your singularity. Here we go. Put your singularity right next to your ender pearl dust. And you blow it up. Any kind of explosion will do. And you get two quantum entangled singularities. Alright, it worked. Cool. Okay, let's get out of this hole. These quantum entangled singularities are entangled. They connect to each other. Okay. They have information that keeps them together. So, put this stuff away. Okay, we can use these to transfer information wirelessly. In other words, there is a way to make uh, applied energistics connect wirelessly now. It wasn't there before. And the quantum entangled singularity is a key p facet of it. Now, we need to build a machine that's actually going to do the transformation. Okay. And we're going to do that using, here we go, it's a multi-block structure, we're going to need eight quantum field rings using advanced processors, regular processors, and energy cells, and some blue crystals. Eight of these for one side, so we need 16 for both sides. And two, uh, one quantum link chamber for each side. So that uses flux pearls, and the pearls flux dust and quartz glass which is actually pretty easy just some quartz dust this stuff is new too vibrant quartz glass hmm what if it glows that would be cool that stuff is new I want to try that out in world um I've already made the patterns and stuff so uh there we go okay so again eight for each side so we're gonna need 16 to do both, and then to get the same one one quantum link chamber, two, 
Okay, so that's gonna take a while. I think everything... I think it'll just take some time, though. It's got all the resources it needs. I shouldn't have any other problems. And I've already, again, made out all the patterns. Um, I have run out of space in my molecular assembler chamber, though. So I am going to, at some point soon, next episode maybe, expand this. Probably add some CPU so it'll we'll move faster, too. And whatnot. That should be pretty easy. I just need to do it. Um, hold on. Let's see. I've got uh, other fun stuff happened. While you are away. Ah. Okay. Uh, my other steam boiler heated up. Okay, she's not completely heated, but it is producing steam. So I had to build an entire second row of engines to handle all the power, or all the steam being produced. And once again, they're now only running at about a little over half. So again, the steam turbine is not running at full capacity. And it's actually losing power now, I think. So, probably would be a good idea to change up the, the wires here so that I can disable certain sections of engines at a time. So while that's all doing that, I think we can do that pretty easily. Get some stone and some levers. What did I just do? Any I plugins? What the what? I hit L. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know that that did that. Okay. Okay, let me get my wrench. Okay, these cables here, you can see that it connects to the top and to the bottom. Both of them are white. If you click here, there, you can change the color. So I just changed that to orange. And the orange is a separate signal, not connected to anything else. So nothing else is orange, so it comes off. I come up here, and set this to orange, and then pull this lever, and then we'll start back up again. So orange connects to orange, doesn't connect at all to white. Let's just change all these to orange. Oop. And it's got all the colors of the Minecraft rainbow. So we've got 16 possible individual um, things being carried. So, uh, let's get rid of that entirely just so I can access. Oh, damn it! That's kind of annoying. There we go. Now I can disable those engines. Let's see how much steam is left over. Okay, enough that everything else seems to be going right back up to full capacity. <coughs> so maybe what I'll do... Oh, I found out that the correct tool to break these is actually a, um, a shovel. Interesting. So, a drill acts as a shovel, so that makes it break easily. So I'm going to adjust this until it's just perfect to keep everything, all these at full capacity without orange, and with orange on, well, yeah. Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah. So, you know, this is going to require a bit of testing, so I'll be back. Well, what do you know? It turns out having all of these orange is actually the perfect amount. Well, that's easy. So, 
when I have that on, or off, up is off, down is on, the steam turbine runs at 100% capacity. Okay. Turn it on. And the steam turbine will lower to about 65 or so. 66. The engines will also slow down. The end result is that I get more MJ, less EU. As all these guys heat up. So, now I can decide whether I want EU or MJ with a single lever. And I'll be able to automate that eventually, whenever I get around to doing that, or feel the need to do that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm waiting on UU to make ender pearls for the flux pearls. But, fortunately I only need one more. So I've got some, uh, uranium shoved into my mass fab. So, oh, there's another one. I did eventually, uh, hook up a, uh, Precision export bus down here for Fusilium and Osmium, which are both used pretty much only as um, amplifiers. So you can use glowstone, osmium, enderite, dust, uranium, thorium, sapphire, ovaline, scrap boxes, ender pearl dust, ruby dust, green sapphire, tungsten, emerald dust, ender pearl dust, Fusilium. Uh, diamond dust, pulverized shiny metal, aka um, platinum dust, redstone, manganese, platinum, plutonium, and scrap manganese. I don't think manganese has any other uses. I think it's there as a, a cross mod compatibility thing. Yes. I don't think I have any. I do. I do, in fact, have some. Well then you're not useful to me in any other way. Go ahead and go in there. And it will as soon as the uh, uranium is done. Forcilium does have another use. Uh, in fact, this is just only a side use. Its primary use is in the mod modular force field system. That's its purpose, is to provide force field energy. But I haven't gotten around to building a force field for any reason. So, yeah. Uh, that mod I'm not going to use next season. I'm going to use a different version of the same mod, and it does not have Forcilium. So, yeah. is it done? No, just two more pieces of UU. Okay. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just wait for those last two pieces to finish. And then we'll build this device. Okay. All done. 16 quantum field rings, 2 quantum link chambers. Okay, we're going to need a bunch of other things. Glass fiber cables, some ME cabling. Some energy tesseract some redstone energy conduits possibly other things okay now let's see where am I going to build this thing oh I may have mentioned um the interesting thing about the uh, the quantum thingy, the multi-block, I forget what the multi-block together is called, is that it does not draw power from your usual AE network. It requires its own power source. Independent power source. So that makes it a little tricky. This might be the perfect spot, actually.
I do plan on expanding this thing, but I can expand it this direction and that direction. I'll put this here. Ah, oh, that's perfect, that's perfect. I was debating about using EU or not, but with this here. Perfect. Okay. What you do is you place your link chamber here and you put field rings around it. Like so. Once you put the last one, it will form into a multi block. Awesome. Okay. Now, you need to put energy and it needs to connect, of course, to your AE system through these blocks, the ones in the the, the the directly adjacent to this one, not the corners, basically. So here it's pretty simple, obviously. So touching this one with all of them, and I'm putting the power from the bottom. Uh, it's lit up. These things are lit up, indicating that it has power and that it's ready to work. Inside your quantum link chamber is an inventory, and in here you just place your quantum entangled singularity. One of them. So remember, these items are how it knows which one connects to which. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, really cool. Okay, so now we gotta go build the other end. Simple enough. Okay. Very important thing to know about this. These two this one and that one will be considered part of the same network, which means you only need one controller. In fact, you have to only have one controller. So I'm actually going to get rid of this controller. I won't even be able to use it. Not that I would really care, but how about we just plop it down on top of here and then throw the tesseract on top? There is, of course, power down there. Well, you know what? I guess I'll just tap into that power down there and uh, just supply a second tesseract to get twice as much power input because I'm constantly running out. Hmm. Get that, that marker, that never worked. So I could remove that. There we go. Is that you getting power directly from it? That is okay, I suppose. How about not? No. much better situation, is it? How's our uranium down here? Okay. Back down lower.
Okay. Now I just put this. Hold on. Remove this. The controller. And put the entangled singularity in there. Let's see if it works. Yes! Check it out. There's my home base. And this stuff too, so they're they're connected now. That means I can get rid of this cable. Another tesseract down there to help increase the amount of power coming in. Okay, because this requires quite a lot. I'll have to look that up. I promise I will before the episode's over. But it requires a lot of power. And if it runs out of power, this will shut down. The whole thing will just stop working. And that will be bad for all this stuff. So. Although really, I suppose all the worst that it will do is this can get clogged up and the bees and uh, combs and things will stop flowing into there and start falling out of the ground. And uh, these machines will fill up but then, I mean, they've got big buffers on them, and they already fill up sometimes when I shut things down or lose power. So that's not that big a deal. Okay, so now it's all connected. That means I don't need something back here. I don't need this tesseract anymore, which was sending back like the combs and things. does mean that this storage cell will start filling up with just random junk from the other side. I don't think that's bad. I don't know if there's like a penalty for items traveling through the gate, the quantum gate there, or if it only, because it does require power continuously, so that might be like the exception. Like it doesn't use extra power for, you know, moving items, but it does use power continuously, so it's sort of the trade-off there. Could be it. Might have to replace that with brick, because that would actually make sense. And I can do that easily. Oh. Oh, I can also get a wireless access terminal on this side, and it will still work. Which is cool. Let's do that. Let's build one. Uh, <laughs> wireless access point. This is awesome. So now I can, you know, craft things from here, access everything. Um, my other system is automatically already, I know it is, pulling out the combs. Oh. Nope. Oh, well, it, it is. It's automatically turning into honey. I might need another... Um, one of those crafting terminals to check the crafting. I can do that too from here. If I have the wireless access point, I can access things from here because it's all the same network. So everything is, is just like as if they were connected by wires, except of course that you need to build the machine and power it. But other than that, the whole thing acts like they're connected. Oh, I don't know what's going on. 
So yeah, cool, right? Ah. Okay, but I might want to design a way to turn it off because it uses a lot of power. And I do want to check and see how much power it uses. That's what I thought. Ah. I need to like put my quarry over a beach or something, get sand. Because that's what it's doing, it's trying to fill the sand barrel. And it's taking up all my time. Who knows? So let's, let's fall. That's not changing. It's draining. That's full. And that's staying the same. So it is draining power. We'll have to see if um, looking at other things, or using other things, or not using other things, how stable it will be in the long run. Um, and uh, if I need to, you know, disable or enable those engines down there in order to get more power. Wow, I'm all out of EU though, so I really need EU. Okay, I need even more power production. Let me see how much time is left in the episode, and then maybe you'll do that this time. Okay, we only have a little bit of time left, but I think it might be a time to at least do a little bit uh, started on some more EU generation. I've decided to use solar power. Now, the normal industrial craft solar panel, uh, of course, is overwritten by Greg Tech. Um is a lot cheaper than this. Normal solar panel uses three panes of glass, three coal dust, a generator, and two electronic circuits. Greg, of course, made it fantastically more expensive with silicon plates, which need to be made in a blast furnace, which uh, you can get from this silicon itself from a lot of things. Redstone, sand, obsidian, clay, you know, all kinds of different stuff. But anyway, uh, carbon plates, from the usual coal and dust circuits and machine block of some kind. So there is a there is a regular machine block. So that's how you get the regular solar panel. A regular solar panel from industrial craft generates one EU per tick in sunlight, which is not very much. However, I have a mod called Advanced Solar Panels. Um, maybe that's him guy who made the advanced armor, which adds, well, advanced solar panels. The advanced solar panel requires regular solar panel, advanced alloy, advanced circuit. These are radiant glass panes, which are reinforced glass, which comes from industrial craft. I don't think I've made any yet. Uh, uranium, surrounded by glowstone. Okay, to make that. And then a radiant reinforced plate. Lapis, uh, diamond, Sumerian part, which is only made from UU, glowstone UU. This, which is made with advanced carbon plates, and, and, and this, which are iridium ingots, which are come from Greg Tech. Normally, it would just be iridium ore and refined iron. So, yeah, really expensive. But this one will generate, um, I believe, 32 EU per tick. Wait, no, no, no. It generates 8 EU per tick and outputs 32. And then there's the hybrid solar panel, which is even more expensive, but generates even more power. And then the ultimate hybrid solar panel, which is even more. So, that's going to be my plan, is building a system to automatically craft all these things. So... I actually already added this ability to make silicon plates. I forget why, but I did. So the silicon plate is all set up all the way through. And everything else, glass panes. I don't think I can make glass panes. Panes just yet. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Awesome. I'm ahead of the game. So I can do that easily enough. Um... Yeah. More of that nonsense. Uh 
How about we just use this one because I already have the ability to make machine blocks. Solar panel. You could actually place these on top of machines. Uh, that's how they work with Greg Tech. So you could take this and place it on top of a machine like a cover, and it will actually um, generate power right in the machine. Ah, it's making more silicon. So clearly, this is going to take a long time to to make anything, but. start building all this or making the crafting recipes for all of this stuff. Oh, I need to make okay. Yeah. Let's see. Normally you can press it. Let's see if Greg changed it. Aha. Something Greg did not change. Who would have thunk it? I'm not gonna put this on the end. Hey, big, get back in there. Ah. Oh. Helps if I actually have to try. Anyway, I think you get the idea. I'm going to be doing that. Hopefully have it ready before next episode, because I think we're going to wrap up here. What's this? I need to make two of those. One for Electrum and one for the, other, the hardened glass, because they're clearly not liking each other. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. See you later.